it's more than I just shoot. I don't know. Uh-huh. I ain't Thank you all for coming this morning. I believe I'm a word from the Lord, and I hope that it falls yeah. on circumcised hearts yeah. and open ears. Yeah. Now, there's a there's a burden that comes with preaching. All right. The burden is this. Uh, you have to say what thus said the Lord. Amen. And the situation with that is, is that there are a lot of opinions as to who Jesus is nowadays. But... I can tell you this. You need not listen to man's opinion of who Jesus is. You need to listen to what this word says. If anybody remembers, last week we were studying the Sunday school lesson how the uh, the lepers, they received Jesus as a prophet, but they didn't receive him as the son of God. So they got their healing by obedience, but they didn't know who he was. See, the thing about it is we need to know who Jesus is and we need to know what we came for. And the truth of the matter is, God is always putting it on my heart to make sure that we know what he came for. Because everyone knows in this congregation that I'm a grace preacher. But the thing about it is, I'm not going to speak about grace today. I'm just going to allude to it. What I'm going to speak about this morning is what grace is for. Because if you don't know what grace is for, then you won't accept it. And the truth of the matter is, if you don't accept grace, then you have not accepted Jesus. All right. Because the truth of the matter is, Jesus is grace. Yeah. So we need to find out what grace is. Now, it used to be for 2,000 years that the way to holiness was Judaism, the law. Uh-huh. Now, the way that we receive holiness is by love. All right. And the thing about it is, the reason that churches aren't growing, the reason that the word seems to be getting ahead is because we have no love. Come on, and I'm going to tell you why we have no love. It's because, essentially, on, it's, been, it's essentially because we teach each other not to look. We teach each other in the world because we are of the world, but we're, I mean, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Oh, wow. So when the, when, the, when, the, when the book refers to being without spot or blemish, it means do not conform to this world. Do not think like the world thinks. Yeah. Because you have been made kings and priests mm -hmm. by Jesus Christ, you have been given mm -hmm. the opportunity to succeed in a world where you're not supposed to succeed. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to understand. Mm -hmm. Listen at this. When Jesus ascended on high, it was the equivalent of when Elisha saw Elisha go to heaven. So think about this. A greater portion is supposed to be given unto you. And the reason we can do a greater portion is because we have been given the Holy Spirit. The paraclete, the comforter. Now the thing is, we know how we have moved from death once in life, we know that we are saved Come on. by love. Yeah, by love. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So if you do not have love, we can't guarantee that you are saved. Come on. And that's that's something that people sh should be concerned with mm -hmm. because I'm a friend of Jesus. He's a friend of mine, All right. and I get real. Upset in the Holy Ghost when he is misrepresented. And the situation is, he is being misrepresented not so much by his people, but by the people that profess to know him. All right, all right. Listen to what I'm saying. You have to have an encounter with Jesus. I say to the preachers all the time, because I believe I've been the elder preacher of all these all right. here. Mm -hmm. And the thing, what I tell the preachers is, all you have to do in order to preach is just tell the people what he did for you. Because when we worship in spirit and in truth, yeah. that's a testimony. Oh, yeah. You 
You understand what I'm saying? Testify as to what he did for you. And let me get to my scripture real quick. Because uh, I have a real big problem with people misrepresenting Jesus. And I'm going to talk about somebody who misrepresents Jesus. Now this is Matthew 23, 23. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Yeah. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law. Listen, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. The Pharisee is very religious. They are very studious. They know the word of God, but they do not have the heart of God. They do not have the mind of God. Jesus Christ went around doing good. In fact, every time he healed somebody, the cry to him was, Lord, have mercy on me. So when we preach Jesus, we need to consider that mercy. So when you save a soul, it is mercy. Amen. And watch this. We have always disputed what is the will of God. Listen. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, meekness, temperance, long suffering, these gifts are the real fruit that we are looking for. We are not looking for escalades, houses, and cars. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is the false fruit. All that will come if you if you walk in his will, but the fruit are the gifts of the Spirit. Yes. And so when I look at a Christian, what I'm looking for is the gift of the Spirit. What did Jesus do to the fig tree? He cursed the fig tree because it had a profession of something it was not doing. It said it had fruit. But it didn't have any fruit. And Jesus got rid of it. Yeah, yeah, Listen yeah. to what I'm saying. You can be saved, but you might not be productive. All right, all right, all right. Because you have to be doing the work of our Father. Right, we, you need right, to be doing the work right. of our Savior. Because Jesus ascended on high. Mm -hmm. We are now the body of Christ. Yes. And if we do not have His personality, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. then we cannot do things according to the way he was doing. Amen. Now listen. In Luke 16, you had the story of the Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. The story of the Good Samaritan, you remember the story. Man went up to Jerusalem. Thieves fell on him. But watch this. Listen to how we demonize the righteous. So, it's, so the scripture says that a priest came Looked on the man, walked on by. We talk about that man. Because we say he shouldn't have did that. And you know what the truth is? He shouldn't have. But watch this. Then a Levite comes by. Looks on the man, passes by on the other side. Yeah. The reason I have a problem with this is because the word of God said that if they were going up to Jerusalem to perform their temple duties, they were supposed to walk on by. Listen to what I'm saying. They were following God. Not man's opinion. Mm -hmm. Listen to what I'm saying. You weren't supposed to help that man. Why? That's an illustration of this. The law cannot save. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Listen. You ain't know what is the law. Holiness cannot save. Holiness cannot save. Love can save. Oh, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What am I saying? I'm saying that. With Jesus Christ, we are no longer under the law. You do not have to be holy to get to heaven. You have been made holy by the blood of Jesus Christ. And now the way that you behave is in love. And what do I mean by that? Love is not a feeling. Love is a decision. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you get married, you do not stay faithful to your husband or your wife. You stay faithful to God. Yeah. That is who you are staying faithful to. Because you can't have faith in a man. You can't have faith in a woman. You can only have 
faith in God. Now, this, now listen to this. Why do I think that mercy is the most important thing in order to grow the church? It's because you have to carry one another's burdens. Now, some people feel like, you know, uh, you need to be Holy Spirit. Listen, there is no law against doing good. That is Holy Spirit. That is Holy Spirit. Listen, the only criteria for not doing good is if you can't do the good. If you don't have enough money to lift this man's burden, then you are not the one that's supposed to lift that burden. That's it. If you if you are too if you if if your money is too low, if you're getting down to the last little bit of your dollars, then don't do it. That's what grace is for. Jesus came so that you don't have to be perfect. Understand what I'm saying? Walk in love, but when you can't do something, he carries the slack. You understand what I'm saying? If you can't bless somebody, guess what? Jesus loves you anyway. But at the same time, what is his will? His will is that all can be saved. Watch this. Let me, let me tell you. Let me tell you what Paul said. Come on. Oh foolish Galatians, who have the wish you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only what I learned you. Watch this. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law <coughs> or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He, therefore, that ministereth to the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? <coughs> I have never seen a holiness preacher hear anybody. Because if you have to, if you have to rely on your own goodness to heal anybody, they won't get healed. Mm -hmm. What you need to rely on is the finished work of Jesus Christ. Listen, I always say this, and it's a very true statement, and you should always keep this in mind. The thief on the cross did nothing to go to heaven. The thief on the cross didn't sing a hymn. He didn't visit a nursing home. He didn't forgive his enemies. He didn't do anything. He just confessed with his mouth and believed in his heart. And Jesus yeah. said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Yeah. So you need to understand, man will give you all types of criteria to get blessed. And it is wrong. The only thing you need to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Now, a long time ago, at the nursing home, is when I realized, and this is when I started preaching this, the only thing that you need to sow in order to get saved is the Word. The only thing that you need to sow in order to get blessed is the Word. Why do I think that? Because these people in the nursing home can't sow a dime. Do you understand? So how do they get saved? How do they get blessed? So I look through the Word. The sower Souls the word. You have to speak what you need into existence. He gave you that power. Let there be light. Amen. We believe, therefore we speak. Mm -hmm. That's how a person meets their needs. Now listen to what I'm saying. Why are you getting your needs met? That's the easy part. Because he has, he knows what you need before you ask. Yes. Amen. But at the same time, while you're getting your needs, you need to be blessing somebody while you are walking through this valley of the shadow of death. Meaning that death is no consequence to the person who feels like they are too broke to bless anybody. He says, the silver is mine, the gold is mine. He'll give it to you. To the person that Fears the person that they're trying to witness to. Psalm 91 says that he will protect you as you go out on the streets and witness. There's no reason to be afraid to bring anybody into the kingdom 
because you are protected. He's your shield and he's your buckler. And actually, that is translated from the Hebrew as really a force field. It's an all-encompassing, all-surrounding shield of protection. But God is only responsible for blessing you if you believe. Amen. But watch this. Faith worketh by love. Listen at me. Another word for that is mercy. The reason Jesus got everything done that he attempted to do is because he was walking in love. Now let me bring this to you. You have to disregard what man says because man has good intentions and they are wrong. Often. Listen, because uh, let me read this to you. Now, we hear this all the time. This is cliche. To God be the glory, right? That's the, that's the statement. That's scripture too, right? He, he won't share his glory with another, right? That's what the word says, right? That's scripture. What Jesus says, though, in 7, John 17, verse 22 through 23, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Listen, I'm telling you what's right. Because it's not my opinion. This is what Jesus said. What I'm trying to tell you is you need not listen to what man is saying. Get in this word and see what it says for yourself. Because men mess up the scripture all the time. And I don't believe that they're doing it on purpose. You have to rightfully divide the word. What does that mean? You have to stand on line upon line, precept upon precept. What does that mean? That means that you need to know, watch this, last week, they recognized Jesus as a prophet. They did not recognize him as the word of God. We need to listen to the word of God, not a, not, not a person. Because the culture has infiltrated this church. Remember Jews said some people have crept in unawares. Unawares. And they have changed, perverted the gospel of Christ. How did they pervert it? They perverted it because they put you under the law and you didn't know. A good man can do a good reason, I mean a good deed for the wrong reason. An evil man can do something nice for the right reason. Listen, works cannot get you into heaven. Paul said, if I give my body to be burned, but have not love, have not love, you understand what I'm saying? The point is love. Yeah. Love is not a feeling. Yeah. It is a decision. And it is a command. On, Listen, I understand. Watch this. I'm going to break it down to you because you need to know what holiness is. Holiness is given to you. You cannot earn it. You can't pray enough. You can't fast enough. You understand what I'm saying? You can't lay hands up. You can't speak to him. You think you might be heard by your one speaking. You can't speak enough to be holy. The only thing you can do is accept the faith that Jesus. Let me break down holiness to you. Because pastor been teaching on it. I'm sure that you're going to understand what I'm talking about. You're all familiar with Goshen, right? That's what holiness is. That is a picture of holiness. It means that even though something is happening all around me, it does not have to happen to me. That's holiness. Holiness means separate. We're there. We see it. He says, a thousand may fall on my, ten thousand in my right. But it will not come near unto me. He says, I will see the reward of the wicked. But it doesn't have to happen to you. Listen, I had three strokes. That does not happen. That's holiness. Because I'm standing before you, having not been able to speak, having not been able to walk, and now I am speaking and walking. That's holy. Why? Because he separated me from them. Now, the truth of the matter is, if you didn't get your healing, does that mean that you are not blessed? No. No. All that simply means is that you need to keep your focus together. What do I mean by that? He said if your eye be single. Watch this. This is how faith works. 
the people that were carrying the young man on the mat, they tore the roof off another man's house. I know that was against the law. If not the spiritual law, the civil law. That was against the law. But they had their mind on Jesus. That's the whole point. You have to keep your mind on Jesus regardless of the consequences. When you contend for the faith, they will talk about you. Listen to me. I know they talked about them pretending to roof off this house. I know they said, hey, I know you're going to come back tomorrow and fix my roof. They talked about these people. You understand? They, they, this was not a popular thing. But Jesus committed them. So my point is, you need to work for Jesus and not people. What am I saying? The man on the corner. You may not bless that man. Because you don't know what he's going to do with the money. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus has never asked you to judge anybody. He never asked you to judge anybody. In fact, the one thing he said do not do is do not judge. If that man wants to go get some beer, that has nothing to do with you. You just meet the need. If you are able. And this is the thing. When you meet the need, God says, if you have pity on the poor, I will lift you up off of your sick bed. Mm -hmm. God is the one that pays you back. If that man trying to get you for your money, let him. Because you're not doing it for him. You are lending unto God. And God is the one that repays. We need to figure out who are we working for. It is not my job to stop you from sinning, Mark. It's not my job. My job is to keep myself from being spotted, from being blemished. And what does that mean? Spot and blemish. It means I don't think like the world thinks anymore. You understand? Because when something bad happens to me, I think like a Christian. Love, joy, peace, temperance, long suffering. That's what I do. Whereas another person might react. I like what Carlos said. Carlos says he goes and talks to these people. Watch this. Why should you? Because you are protected by God. He said...